Hey everybody, Nate from Performance Part Out. I want to go over a couple data logs and dyno charts today. This is comparing the FP0 62mm turbo for the DSM and Evo 3 and Gallant VR4 with the turbo we replaced, which is the 8cm FP Black journal bearing 59mm turbo. So let's get to it. We've got our dyno chart up here, which is comparing two different runs. At 40 pounds of boost was our target, um, and they're obviously on two different days. The green and blue charts are from the FP Black 59 millimeter with the 8 centimeter housing, and it made a peak of about 550 horsepower. And the zero obviously makes more power, it's a larger turbo, it made just shy of 600 horsepower. And um, we only got one single run because we had an engine mechanical failure on the dyno, timing belt related. But um, anyway, let's take a look at the dyno. We've got a little bit of a, a low area here as to be expected. And this is why. When we look at boost pressure, the black is the green curve. The yellow curve for boost is the FP0, the larger turbo. So for spool up, if we say 30 PSI is our benchmark, the FP Black gets there at 5,800 RPM. The Zero takes to just about 6,000 RPM. So we've got about a 200 RPM spread where the, the smaller turbo with the smaller turbine housing spools up about 200 RPM faster. But we didn't hit our boost target with the Zero. We only, the wastegate started to open around 36 pounds of boost. and We didn't really hit 40 or we didn't come close to equalizing the boost pressure on these two until around 8,000 RPM. So below 8,000 RPM, we've got to give the the zero a little bit more credit than the dyno is showing because we weren't at equal boost level. So everything from about here down, the zero should do a little bit better um, when the boost actually hits the 40 PSI target. So I did mark up a, uh, you know, a quick Photoshop markup here. Uh, this is the curve I would expect if we spooled to 40 pounds of boost and just stayed at 40. So back to the dyno, or excuse me, back to the data log. Uh, the comparison between these two, I've got the RPM lined up for both runs, so it matches in as most spots as it's spooling up. Uh, the dyno starts recording around 5,000 RPM, and we ran it to about 92. Um, to preface this, on a drag run, we're typically running our gear changes just shy of 9,000 RPM. We're going through the traps over 9,000 RPM to go about 147, 148 miles an hour. And the lowest RPM we see after the gear change is around 67. 67 here too, 67. Okay, so this is the, sp the RPM spread we actually care about for going down the track at a drag race, um, which I've marked on this. So we're, we're interested in, in the section of the dyno chart from here to here. Everything below this is sort of irrelevant for drag racing. It's, you know, information that would be good for a street car, but for drag racing, really don't care what it does down here. We only care about 7,000 RPM to 9,000 RPM. So obviously in this range, the zero has quite a bit of advantage over the black, but how much? What it comes down to is that this is the chart of exhaust back pressure. The FP Black with the 8 centimeter turbine housing and the TDO 6H turbine wheel makes a peak of about 80, 81 PSI of exhaust back pressure at nearly 9,000 RPM, where the new Zero is only at 72 pounds of exhaust back pressure. That has a 10 centimeter turbine housing and a more modern turbine wheel. But the whole way from spool up, even as low as, uh, let's go to like 4,500 RPM, at 4,500 RPM, we're we're pretty close in back pressure, but the zero is making less back pressure everywhere along the curve than these than the black is, which results in this curve. A this is engine pressure ratio. This is our exhaust pressure divided by our boost pressure. So uh, it's a rough equivalence of engine flow efficiency as far as the turbo is concerned. So the zero is in yellow, the black is in orange. We've got a, a fairly large 
6%, 7%, almost 10 per, over 10% difference in, in efficiency of, this is basically our, our pumping ratio across the head. So that explains the, the power difference. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the other things that were of note between these two runs, um, and this is getting specific into my car, my specifics. Um, we did change the fuel. We changed our target, um, our target air fuel ratio from a, like a low 11 on the black to a high 12 or a, a 12 high 11 was our target. Um, we were basically trying to do this because of the EGT readings. Uh, when we had the black on, we had nice, clean, smooth EGT readings, and on the zero, we're still getting a little bit of this. Um, jagged EGTs at high RPM, which we believe is being caused by uh, unburned fuel hitting the uh, EGT sensor in the in the runner. So um, that's the, the, the rationale for, for leaning out our target air fuel ratios. We're trying to eliminate any unburned fuel messing up our EGT readings. So the other thing we've changed is we've changed our base fuel pressure. On the black, we were running 50 PSI of base fuel pressure. On the zero, we're now up to like 65, 64, 65 for base fuel pressure. We're trying to get the injector duty cycle down. Uh, on the black, you can see this green curve is injector duty cycle, and we're approaching 80% when the injectors go static and then you lose control of air fuel ratio. So we've bumped up the base fuel pressure and then that reduces your injector duty cycle to get the same air fuel ratio. So now on the, the zero, we're running about 74, 75% max injector duty cycle. Uh, this is all just, you know, tuning specifics, not related to the specific comparison between the turbo. But I'm trying to go over the differences so you can see that the these two dyno charts are as, as close to back to back and apples to apples as possible. Uh, this is ignition timing between the two. Um, we should actually move the offset on this so that they line up at high RPM. Okay, so at around 8,500 RPM, we're less than one degree of ignition timing off, running about 21 degrees of ignition timing at 85, and uh, I think we go up to about 23 degrees max. And move the offset down to let's find 7,000 RPM is at our gear change. Let's move our offset to line up down here. And at the gear change, we're a degree and a half off. Um, looks like the tune was slightly more aggressive on the dyno run for the smaller turbo for the 59 black versus the 62, um, but fairly close. So you can give the, the zero a little bit of credit there for actually making this curve with less timing. Um, our converter slip on the dyno is very consistent. Our vehicle speed on the dyno is consistent. Nothing looks weird there. Uh, I've had people ask me about the knock sensor readings on this. Um, this orange curve is our knock threshold. These are the two knock sensor readings. Uh, we're running a, a Haltech Elite computer with a 2G 95 to 99 OEM knock sensor. And, uh, Nothing looks weird here. They're both fairly consistent. It's basically engine noise. Um, I don't have wastegate position for the black. We didn't have that sensor on when we ran that dyno, but um, I do have it for the zero. And it looks like we're using roughly less than 20% of our <laughs> wastegate travel. Um, we do need to work on the boost control too. Um, we didn't need to open the wastegate as early as we did. It actually cut down max or cut down boost at low RPM. Uh, we only hit 36 pounds of boost right after initial spool up when the wastegate opened. And you can see the exhaust pressure trace is in orange. The exhaust pressure is ramping up and then flat lines a little bit or the, the slope angles down, knees over, and then starts climbing with RPM. That if we were to increase our boost control duty cycle here, we would lower the wastegate opening or delay the wastegate opening, and we would actually make our manifold pressure spool up, hit 40, and then stay at 40. So back 
back to this dyno chart. <sighs> so as far as, actually, let me go to the, the marked up one. In the range that we're we're looking to run this turbo down the track from 9,000 to roughly 6,800 RPM to 9,000 RPM, the, the Zero obviously has a fairly large advantage. And this is at the, at the same, actually at a little bit less less boost level at the low RPM and equal boost level up top, um, we're making almost a hundred horsepower advantage at 9,000 RPM when we're going through the traps and we're making a healthy 40, 50 uh, horsepower gain at the low end. So there's, you're really giving up nothing on this to go to the larger turbo. And um, we haven't really cracked the max on this. Um, we want to go back to the go back to the dyno and go back to the track, run this at 45, 46 pounds of boost, and kind of pump the volume up on this curve. I would expect that at 45 pounds of boost, we're going to make a curve that's going to look something like this. It's going to continue up, and we're going to be up in like the 650, 640 range. And it, you might have a little bit more of a drop off as we reach the compressor limit on it. But um, I would imagine we're going to make a hundred plus horsepower over the zero or over the black once the zero is maxed out. And um, as soon as I get that data, we get back to the dyno again. Um, we'll make another comparison video. But for now, this is what we're looking at. Um, this is as apples to apples as I can give. Um, we tried to hit the same 40 psi. Uh, it, it hit it up top, but even given that the the larger turbo had slightly less boost at low RPM, um, it still beat the it still beat the back black everywhere. Check back in.